इतना मरा हुआ ऑनलाइन मैंने कभी आज तक अपनी जिंदगी में खेला हैज गॉन एवरीबॉडी हैज गॉन लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई वाज मदरिंग सम टू माय सेल्फ फॉर आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट डेड ऑनलाइन एक्सपीरियंसेस नाउ माय ग्रेट 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 ग्रैंडफादर डाइड जनरेशंस अगो ओके हंड्रेड्स ऑफ इयर्स अगो ऑल राइट दैट वाज अ लॉन्ग टाइम इन हिस्ट्री बट आई एम प्राउड टू से आई फाउंड समथिंग इवन डेडर देन हिम राइट नाउ एंड दैट इन फैक्ट इज रेड डेड ऑनलाइन नाउ बिफोर वी स्टार्ट ऑफ विद आई मेड अ लॉट ऑफ वीडियोस अबाउट जीटीए ऑनलाइन ओके जीटीए 5 ऑनलाइन आई टॉक्ड अ लॉट ऑफ क्रैप अबाउट जीटीए 5 एंड it's online but i am hopelessly addicted i love grand theft auto online now there's no doubt that gta online itself was in perfect at launch let's be completely real when rockstar first dropped this it was almost a bit barren now compared to red dead gta is obviously a bigger ip and there's a lot more malleability with what you can introduce such as cars guns and what not but one thing about gta online is there's multiple heights now there's multiple avenues of grinding and in the last year and a half we focused more on small group play than actually opening ourselves up to 32 player lobbies where potentially 31 of them could be flying bikes around blowing up a lot of your gear costing you a tons of time and money. Obviously Rockstar's focused more on bringing people together your small group and doing crimes and jobs. It's kind of like single player DLC obviously in that multiplayer scenario. They're focusing on that co-op play more so than just debauchery online. The same cannot be said however for Red Dead. And so we're going to jump into the real key differences at least from my play time between both online experiences. Now to understand in GTA Online's case if one new player could muster enough millions upon millions of dollars. Again, I understand the initial grind's going to kind of suck, but when you jump into the idea of like purchasing just this one like submarine, you open yourself up to the Cayo Perico heist, which is a reasonable heist that some players can start off with, grind enough and make millions of dollars doing it solo and make enough money to start purchasing the other avenues of grinding in the game. Once you have all these avenues, making money in GTA 5 online is pretty trivial and it mostly becomes just you and a couple friends goofing around making money in a short spurt and then spending it all on various multiple things that you can purchase from the store like vehicles and what not clothing whatever you want to call it rockstar consistently is updating the game with multiple clothing sets multiple vehicles multiple properties for you to go purchase which really just makes it a never ending grind and in a game like this That's probably the best one can hope if this is the only form of progression. But beyond Cayo Perico as a starter heist, you also have other avenues. You don't have to just grind one. If you have a small group of friends, you can do multiple other heists, and there's a few examples of them here. But beyond the Cayo Perico heist, there's also the Doomsday heist, the initial wave of heists in GTA. There's also the new contract, which is more of a campaign-focused heist with Dr. Dre and big names, brand new music, cars, guns, whatever you want to call it, and that tongue-in-cheek Rockstar writing. Look, GTA Online has a lot of ways for you to make money. Okay, some of them grindier than others, but no one can deny it's a far better experience for the newcomer than it was ever before. Do we remember the days where we would literally get paid out so little that it cost us more in ammunition, okay? We would waste more money burning through bullets than actually making at the end of the day, okay? Now Red Dead is one of those franchises where obviously the single player is great. I like Red Dead 2 single player. I think it's probably one of my favorite single player games from last generation. Now If you play Red Dead Online, it's almost like two different studios worked on either component. For instance, Rockstar Games worked on the single player, and apparently they either farmed out the multiplayer to like, you know, Pearl Abyss or or, or Nexon, you know, one of the South Korean MMO farm hubs where you basically get a game that's just all grind, no fun. That's Red Dead. Now I made a video a while back a long time ago discussing the Red Dead online economy, where for some reason buying a Mauser pistol was equivalent to buying a set of clothes. That much hasn't changed. I don't know if my character's buying a Balenciaga bag back in the day is the only high-end brand I know. Don't 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 BS me on that. But uh I don't know. I don't know if this like outfit is worth as much as a pistol but in rockstar's eyes it might be in fact bandoliers and certain attachments may be worth hundreds if not more dollars horses i can understand but when the horse value is reaching up to levels where i'm pretty sure back in the day you could buy houses is very questionable
See, Red Dead Online doesn't have the same level of monetization ability, or if that's even a word, than Grand Theft Auto Online. Let's put it into perspective. In GTA, when you update the game, you can introduce things like various supercars, okay? Just riffs on modern day vehicles. You can introduce properties. You can introduce new firearms. You can introduce a lot of new things like flying motorcycles that have missiles attached to them. I will never get over that. But with Red Dead Online, how much can you really add in a game where women aren't even allowed to vote yet? I'm sure someone at Rockstar must have been planning that maybe, maybe we can attach heat-seeking missiles to horses that fly around the map at Mach 5. But being a game that's supposed to be grounded a bit more in reality than, say, something like even GTA 5, I believe that's a tough proposition. Hey, can we make these enemies bullet sponges without introducing Kevlar armor into the background? I don't know. Hey, can we somehow introduce AK-47s as guns that people would likely get? No, the closest technology has touched upon here are guns that operate in semi-automatic as far as I can tell. There are shotguns, but there's only so much you can go in this entire world. There's no way they can introduce rail guns and mini guns and alien machinery, unless of course they implement an alien DLC, which would have been cool, which would have been interesting had they touched upon it. Honestly, the DLC in Red Dead would have been great if they made something like Undead Nightmare for the online front. Or, hell, Cowboys vs. Aliens I would have gladly accepted if they wanted to go down that route. Frankly, what we have here are bare updates to a game that, frankly, is in need of them. Gonna sit down and play the game. Now, first things first, the actual footage you're seeing is from the PlayStation 4 version of the game. I bought the Ultimate Edition back in the day where Rockstar kind of gave Ultimate Edition players like hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to start off with, so don't look at my money count as an indication of me grinding. A lot of that money is just money that Rockstar has given me for the sake of buying a more premium edition. Now, so I did a couple missions, and to understand, Red Dead Online works like this. You connect onto an online system, you can free roam around the world of uh, world of Red Dead 2, all of its giant map, uh, and generally, if you just jump into it, you'll probably notice, yeah, it feels a lot like GTA Online. Now, when you open up the map screen, you'll notice it's got a lot of purple, you know, or sorry, pink maps, uh, pink points all over the all over the map. Now, this might look like chicken pox, I don't know, but but in reality, these are little stranger missions. So you go up to these people, you take some missions, some of them give you a bad honor, some of them give you a good honor. Uh, the missions are like 15 minutes long, and uh, basically sometimes they can range from hijacking something, killing someone, freeing somebody, you know, the basic boring stuff that you would expect any open world game to provide you. And if you ever look at the payouts for these real closely, motherfucker, this is minimum wage we're talking, okay? Like, maybe after a good 10, 15 minutes of work, they might give you a four Four dollars. Four dollars. I swear I've seen payouts of up to one dollar at times. Okay, a whole goddamn dollar. Like, there are sweatshop workers on the other side of the world that are looking at you, feeling like Jeff goddamn Bezos in comparison. This is what it looks like. Now, there are multiple currencies to Rockstar Games' Red Dead 2. There's dollars, okay? There's gold. There's roll tokens. And now, there's something called Capital. In comparison to Red Dead, uh, or sorry, GTA Online, there's only one currency or two. There's US dollars, which, I mean, come on now, we expect that to be a thing, or I think they call it GTA dollars. I'm not so sure. I think it's GTA dollars. The other one are casino tokens, because, you know, you go inside a casino and you play slots, and of course they're going to have a different token for that. With Red Dead Online, bro, they got like, they got like four different paths. Now, of course, dollars are one thing, but if you ever want to unlock things faster, you can get that juicy gold. Now, the gold costs a few bucks on the online marketplace. This is the premium currency, and and if you don't want to pay for it, well, you better get used to making, like, crumbs of it every once in a while. It's gotten better, I would say, in the last patch, but, uh, it's not exactly ideal. But then you've also got roll tokens, and there's multiple rolls in the game, so it'll give you these blue tokens to unlock, like, random things throughout the entire experience. Some of the stuff may make your situation better. Like, for instance, as a bounty hunter, they gave me the option to buy a improved lasso. So that, you know, people that I was arresting couldn't just break out and run into the wilderness. Nope, forget the entire point real quick. Why is rope alone $350? That's criminal in of itself. That's worse than the criminals I'm busting. Now, stop. I had to re-record this video a few times, okay? This is something that I've been working on for a little bit. I had to experience Red Dead. But the reason I had to re-record this is Rockstar has actually updated Red Dead Online. Now, this is a big deal, okay? For instance, GTA players, yeah, you get new updates all the time. No, no one gives a shit about that. But with Red Dead players, these people have been sucking on the update teat for years on end. And, like, little drops are coming out every once in a while. 
So let me show here. Start off the new year with bonuses on a land of opportunities, call to arms, gang hideouts, and more. All month long. Let's click on what Rockstar considers to be a fucking update for one of their only other online games in rotation. So here it is, land of opportunity, start the new year. So here's what you got. You've got call to arms, set up your defenses, fend off attackers, and defend allies. From what I understand, this is survival mode, which uh, has been in part of GTA V since the launch of that entire online experience, you know, back on the PS3 era. So this isn't anything new. If you think this is some big deal, I don't know what to tell you, Chief. Then you've got the online series, Team Shootout, Shootout, Takeover, Team Gun. All right, let me explain how the matchmaking works. In the in the actual, like, when you log into the game, you can open up the player menu and just go and just pick a generic set of series. So I picked the, 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 the Team Deathmatch series, the Deathmatch series, the combat, the PvP. Literally, on peak times, no one, and I was not able to find a match, okay? This match was not there. All right, so even when they feature this stuff, I feel like nobody plays it because everyone's too busy trying to grind and make a buck in this game than actually play some of the series that Rockstar features. Not to say that those series are either fun anyways, okay? They're just team deathmatch. Which, the matchmaking in a Rockstar game is very questionable. It's always it's, it's actually a topic of discussion on a whole because Rockstar makes so many different like lobbies and like fragments the player base so hard that uh, it is genuinely hard to find matchmaking, even sometimes on GTA V for a lot of their, you know, playlists that they've generated. Red Dead isn't like, it's not like this simply because Red Dead is more dead than GTA Online. It's just a matter of like Rockstar's matchmaking is a little questionable. Ah, double Red Dead for gang hideouts. If you stumble upon any gang hideouts while out and about on your travel, make sure to wipe them off the face of the frontier. Yeah, so gang hideouts are where just AI sit around so you can go and blow shit up and make some money, I guess, out of it. And also find Capital, which is, again, the other currency that they've introduced. There's so many currencies that it's hard to keep track at this point. Oh, limited time clothing! You know, it's really hard to get excited about clothing in, in any online game at this point. There used to be a period in GTA where we were genuinely, like, being billed, like, hey, guys, make sure to buy those new, uh, new butt plugs that are at the bingo this time. No, there's actually new content in GTA worth playing. Unlike Red Dead where, uh, yeah guys, you want to buy this new winter coat? Here you go. It's limited time. Line up, I guess. So obviously not the most grandiose update. If you were Red Dead Online player and you saw this, maybe, maybe it might be disheartening. But let's get over to some of the grinding that you'd be doing in Red Dead Online. And I've done a fair bit of it, so let me explain my experience so far. And it's not a comprehensive guide, but at least it's my experience that I want to share with you. So to understand, there's roles in Red Dead. Roles are basically different avenues of grinding, and they're very comparative to things that you would find in GTA Online. In fact, systemically, I wouldn't say there's that much of, you know, key differences. Now, number one is Traitor, which basically is uh, the first role that I think ever got introduced into the game. And the general idea with Traitor is you basically hunt animals. Uh, and you basically salvage, you know, their skins, their antlers, whatever, you know, goods that you can get off of a dead animal in Red Dead. Now, you give these items to a person called Crips at your camp, who then processes these into materials. You can then sell these materials locally for less money, or remotely in a far off distance in the game, basically a longer escort mission where other players can jump in and barrage hell onto you. We know how fun that is. Now look, I like hunting. I think it's one of the best avenues of actually having fun in this game. It's a very good system, but in order to actually make any dent in this, you have to hunt like basically every single thing that you have to put more animals down than ever before. And once you give it to Crips, you'll see that little material bar going up so incrementally and he runs through it like no tomorrow. I guess if I had to compare this to any other system would be actually like GTA 5's crate system. So if you don't know, GTA 5 has multiple avenues. You can be a CI CEO, you can be a VIP, you can be a motorcycle club owner. Basically, it gives you options to purchase properties, which can be used as businesses. However, in GTA, you earn these by purchasing them, sourcing them yourself, or if the grind is too much, Rockstar allows you to pay some money to fill up that progress bar. Basically, you pay a little bit, but you save your time and you can do something more fun. Here in Red Dead, it doesn't seem like you have the option. You kind of just sit here and are forced to gather, donate these materials and sell them whenever you can. And this is boring, okay? When you get to a point where like you have to grind this hard, 
like it's a full-time job, it's not a fun game anymore. At least in GTA's Avenue, it seems as though being rewarded, you actually get substantially more money. I feel like the money I get in GTA is far more valuable than whatever Rockstar is rewarding me over here. At least in GTA's case, you can make a serious amount of cash just from selling crates if that's one of the first avenues of businesses that you have. If you're going to go ahead and use this role as a way to level up, <laughs> Whew, it's going to take some time. You better get used to killing and putting down more animals than ever before if you ever want to make a dent in making money this way. But trading isn't the only role that you can do. There's also Moonshiners, which comes with its own set of story stuff. And before we continue, the roles do in fact have all their own cutscenes and their own little story arcs to go through, which I think is genuinely cool in Rockstar games, okay? Like whenever they make an online experience, it's kind of a cool narrative experience. They come along with it. It's not just a set of menus that you go through just to make money. And I think that's generally okay. That's a cool thing to do. But in the case of Moonshiners, it's effectively the same thing, source and sell even further. Then comes the other roles, and this is where you go from fun to fucking boring. So Bounty Hunter, which sounds like a role that you would jump into, and at this point, they require you to pay some gold up front. Gold is that microtransaction currency that if you were to play completely free, you'd earn crumbs of it at a time. Now, if you source up to like five, you know, gold bars, Moonshiners alone was 25 gold, okay? That was 25 gold you had to pony up, which I think conversion-wise is 10 bucks. So $10 to add some extra functionality and gameplay to your already $60 experience. Sounds good? No. Now, if you look at Bounty Hunter, this is what I think most people expected out of Red Dead, okay? Most people expect it to actually be doing criminal things. Now, while Bounty Hunters don't necessarily commit crimes, you would think, um, this is the closest we're going to get to actually having fun. Because up until this point, playing Red Dead Online was like playing Cabela's Big Game Hunt, okay? There was actually more Stardew Valley shit in this game than there was actual Red Dead shit. So you're not actually doing criminal work to make money. You're actually hunting and fishing to make a goddamn buck at all in this video game. So up until this point, once you get access to things like Bounty Hunter, you can go to a board, pick up a bunch of bounties on the screen. Sometimes there'd be a legendary bounty. Sometimes there would be a bounty that would be slightly more difficult. So this is actually a better payout. You, you Sometimes you make like 10 bucks. Sometimes you make 20 bucks. Sometimes if you do the more expensive things, you might make $40, which, hey, it's a fair bit of money in comparison to the $1 payout I was getting doing standard missions off the bat. Now, to start off with, one thing that you'll learn about Red Dead is they really want you to waste time. Now, I'm going to run through a dialogue here, run through a little, you know, let's go through a little process. If the game gives you 20 minutes to complete a mission, and you complete that mission in, say, five minutes, you have 15 minutes left to spare, should you be rewarded extra money for the time and efficiency you put into the mission? Yeah? Well, Rockstar Games does not believe that. See, the best way to make money in this is, let's say you're doing a bounty, and the bounty's like 20 minutes. You've already got the target, you're back at the you're back at the prison, you know, and you've got 15 minutes left to kill. Well, go get yourself some goddamn G Fuel, all right? You know, go jack off, go do something else, because you want to burn down the 14 minutes and 30 seconds, so you have as little time to turn in the quest, so you make the maximum reward, because you actually get paid more, from what I see, from what I've noticed, if you just burn more time. What kind of a weird system is it, where, like, you get rewarded more for, like, being more inefficient in a game? than actually being in actually being efficient. Why? Why is it that we've reached to this point? Everything in this game is literally designed as a way to make the player spend more useless time and just to pad out the reward. It's almost like we're playing a free-to-play game. This is not a free-to-play game. This is part of a $60 gaming experience that you buy. And no, don't come at me, but Muda, you can go to Steam and buy it for $5. Now, that wasn't available at launch there, bucko, all right? That was just Rockstar's way of selling more copies to get more idiots to jump on and waste more of their hours. No, this is still part of a $60 experience. You should not have to burn your hours this hard to make a buck. This is less than minimum wage. This is less than minimum wage back in the day. Dude, you're making so little in the world of Red Dead Online. The IRS doesn't even put you as a blip on their radar. 
And listen, before some Civil War actor comes into the comment section saying, but Muda, this is what the wages were like back in the day. If the wages were like this back in the day, the pricing on goods and services are like as if the, pri as if the actual cost inflated to 2021 levels. This is not normal. But don't get me started. There's more roles than that. There's stuff like naturalist, which uh, have you ever wanted to like hunt, but also not hunt? Do you ever wanted to like just study animals? Well, you've got a whole role for you, kiddo. Hey guys, do you like the collector job? This might be one of the most boring jobs I've ever seen in the game. However, it's also one of the most profitable jobs. See, the collector's idea is open up Reddit, go to like whatever map they have on there for the collector role and just follow each point that they have. Find all the items in the online world, turn them into Madame Nazar and make a good chunk of cash. This might be the most profitable role but also the most boring role ever conceived in the history of gaming. And that is saying something. I played a lot of games with boring grinds in them. This takes the goddamn cake. Now, up until a few months ago in 2021, Rockstar decided, okay, we're not just going to kill Red Dead Online completely. We're going to introduce something by the name of Blood Money. Now, let me tell you how bad Blood Money is, okay? Blood Money is like the first time where you actually get your hands dirty in notorious services to the connected members of Stan Denise Society. Let me explain this, okay? Now, up until this point, we've been bounty hunting, which isn't exactly being a criminal. We've been studying animals. All right, hunting and fishing and uh, collecting stuff in the world of the game, okay? the I think the closest thing to doing criminal activities was running moonshine. But, like, guys, we're not going to... If, if that's the equivalent, okay, there was a game I used to play as a kid called uh, Cross Country Canada, okay? If that's... If this is the metric we're using for Red Dead Online's premier gameplay, it's up there with Cross Country Canada, okay? That's a game I used to play in the school computer lab. I shouldn't have to relive that experience in a $60 game, all right? That's burning a hole in my graphic card with how good its graphics look. This is not how the world is. So anyways, when Rockstar introduced Blood Money, this was like the one game expansion where like you're actually doing criminal jobs for people in the world. <sighs> Let me give you an example of a blood money mission, okay? You go to the same types of people that you would find in the pink blips all over the map, the same little NPC characters, except this time you have the option of doing a standard mission or a blood money mission. Now, for instance, the blood money missions that I did, for instance, involved home burglaries. Now, I thought the home burglaries would be cool. I'd get to sneak into the house and, you know, look through their housing stuff without, like, any, you know, without waking up the people. Maybe I get rewarded extra. No, you start the mission off, it gives you, like, 20 minutes to do what is, in fact, a two minute quest line and you just roll through all right you try sneaking up to the house the ai in the game is like vigilant okay it'll spot you from a mile away you get into a little gunfight doesn't matter if you die a few times it's not like team lives are calculated you go into the house grab an item drop it off somewhere else and bam you are finally done and you have made a few dollars congratulations now in this entire mode there's also a new currency called capital which can be used for a bunch of other things the closest you get okay to actual criminal behavior is this update and it isn't even that impressive now one thing i have to ask before i tie this off is where are the goddamn heists okay i'm a cowboy back in the day i should be able to go into the valentine bank rob it with my homies and run off with all the stuff you know like you can do in the single player campaign now in my opinion I think the real problem with Red Dead Online is there's really not a whole lot of rewards that Rockstar can muster up in this time period to really make it worth it, okay? To understand, after you buy your few weapons and your jackets and everything, what else is there in Red Dead really going out to worth buy, okay? Aside from ammunition and a few random items, there's really not a whole reason to spend an exorbitant amount of money. So I think what Rockstar is doing is they're drip feeding the amount of money that people can actually make in order to prolong the amount of grind that it would take. So people can't just jump in, play it for like a month and realize, I got everything worth having, let me dip out. That's a reality that I think Rockstar is facing. Honestly, my real problem is there's really not a whole reason to jump in and come back to. There's no heist, there's no real criminal things that you're doing in Red Dead that are actually worth it, okay? If I'm gonna jump into Red Dead Online and hunt and fish, I might as well just do that in the single player, 
on my own. It's better in my experience that way. If I'm going to sit on Red Dead Online, I don't want to sit there doing menial shit when I really envision myself doing things like the Valentine Bank Heist, the San Denis Bank Heist, various like actual jobs. Why am I not stealing from the US government back in the day? All right. Why am I not doing cool stuff that I would? Why am I not doing train robberies, elaborate train robberies, elaborate jobs that you would be doing in the single player that could easily carry over to the online? Granted, Rockstar would have to reward you pretty handsomely for it, and people would be chewing up those rewards like no tomorrow, but it would yield for a better gaming experience. The thing with Red Dead Online is with the lower player base and the less amount of content that we have, we're never really going to reach the levels of GT Online. Red Dead is always going to stay dormant and dead the way that Rockstar, I guess, is leading it. So this is where we're getting into, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to make my video. I know that I was all over the place here, but I frankly had a lot of stuff to say about Red Dead. I've been playing it for a little bit, and will I continue to play it? No, I've got better things to do. That said, though, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to load up some Shenmue 2. This is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it. If you dislike it, I am out.